Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Unreal Return to Napoli. On this episode, we're going to be playing Eldora's Well. And first I wanted to take care of this tentacle, and for whatever reason I get hit, but um, I'm not too worried about my health in this episode, because there's a couple of uh, cheat things we can do to kind of um, avoid a few attacks and actually save a little bit of health anyway, so we'll get to that in a moment. This first section is uh, basically the bottom of the well. And as you can see here, there's nothing in it. It's dry. And uh, for whatever reason, the Scarge have kind of uh, drained everything. And they're patrolling down here, too. We've got a few crawl. Uh, just regular crawl soldiers. Nothing to really uh, worry about. Here I am just kind of debating which weapon I want to use. I use the Automag a lot in this level, and probably in the last level, too. It's a very uh, handy weapon. Although, there's going to be some enemies pretty soon where I'm not going to use the automatic against, and you'll see that momentarily. I'm kind of being a little cautious in this level because there are uh, two other enemies that are going to pop up pretty soon. And I'm not always sure exactly where they pop up, but it's by the time you get down here, they start to pop up. And if you're not ready for them, they can kind of surprise you. And that's what they are, gas bags. Aren't you glad to see those gas bags back? I never really figured out that the gas bags are part of Napoli, if they were part of the crawl, or if they were part of the scars, or where they came from, or if they were even part of the mercenaries. But um, at any rate, here they are, and we have to deal with them. Thankfully, they're pretty slow, and I like the assault rifle against these guys. You can pin them down, and it kind of prevents them from attacking very much. So I think it's a good selection, good weapon for them. And take a look at this area, kind of memorize it a bit, uh, because it's going to change pretty soon. Right here, I'm kind of selecting the weapon for what I want to look at next, or what I want to deal with next, rather. And I think the flat cannon's a very useful weapon for what we're about to have to deal with. Surprise! Yeah, we're going to have to deal with some crawl here. And one of them has that blue tent, so he's a crawl elite. So he's going to take a little bit of uh, pounding before he goes down. I don't know if I showed it in this level or not, but... Uh, Sometimes there's kind of dice um, around here, but sometimes there's not. This part of the level, I think it's kind of randomly generated. But basically what the crawl were doing is they were kind of arguing over some dice. And it may have been just nolly dice or something like that. They may have been gambling, I don't know. Also, watch out here. Sometimes bite flies will um, spawn and start attacking you. And that's what happened to me here because one time only one spawn one time two spawn like they did here and another time I practiced it none spawned at all and I thought it was kind of weird so there's a little bit of randomness in the enemies here and I like that now this next section well first of all we gotta wait for all of the um, ooze to kind of well it's really well water although it looks kinda of green it's really not gonna hurt us but this next section I'm gonna run through it as quickly as possible I'm not gonna deal with this next area because we've got two very large groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of explode the uh, crates as much as possible. Get some combat assault rifle rounds and a shield belt. I know that went by quickly, but basically it's what it's saying is that uh, they're hoping to sneak by the brutes and jump in the swell, which is what I would suggest doing. You can hear them kind of arguing amongst themselves there. There's also a couple of mantas up there as well, so the fight is just, it's not something I'd like to deal with. They're going to waste a lot of ammunition and a lot of your health, and, um, you know, I'd rather just not deal with it, because I've got some tough enemies ahead. First of all, I want to get rid of these sharks here. I'm just going to call them sharks. They kind of remind me of those sharks in Half-Life 2. There's a lot of similarities between Unreal and Half-Life. Not Well, I guess it's Half-Life, not Half-Life 2. Fortunately, we have plenty of room to deal with these guys. Also, the scuba gear, as soon as you hit air, 
it will recharge itself, and that's kind of a nice little thing. I don't think it did that in Unreal, the original Unreal. So it's kind of a nice little touch to this game. And we do need the scuba gear. Thankfully, they equip us with scuba gear in the beginning, so if you wonder where it came from, well, that's where it came from. And, of course, we got to deal with the water serpents here. And I find the stingers are a really good weapon for them. You kind of unload on them. Sometimes they can't attack you from beneath. Sorry, they can't attack you when they're above you. So that's a good time to get rid of them. But that's not going to be the last of them. And here I'm going to uh, recharge my scuba gear a little bit. So you can see what happens is it recharges rather quickly, thankfully. And it's a good time to get a little bit of rest if you need that. And now that the scuba gear is recharged, we can keep going. Now this next area is kind of a bit of a maze. But there's only one real direction we can go in. But they're a little sneaky on that. So what you want to do is just kind of look at the one open area here. And you kind of want to look above you. And I went down a little bit just to kind of show you where that leads to the other section. But you basically want to go over uh, here, look up, and there you go. I'm going to deal with the, another water serpent. He attacks me a little bit, but whatever. Also, this is kind of neat that they filled the level. You remember in Tyranix, in um, the original Unreal, they actually reloaded the entire level to fill it with water, or fill it with ooze, or toxic waste, or whatever you want to call it. But this time, they didn't need to do that. So, I think they just filled it with water in Tyranix, because it really didn't injure you if you swam through it. But, or maybe it was uh, engine coolant or something, because they did give you a... Uh, toxin suit. But it's been a while since I've looked at that, so I apologize if I'm incorrect. I'm sure somebody's going to correct me on that. But it's a nice touch on the level design that they actually flooded it with water, instead of just changing the level out. And we've got a boat here that we need to take. But before we do, we've got to deal with some gas bags, of course. And this level's rather short, thankfully. I'm finding the levels are kind of really short um, in this expansion so far. But, on the other hand, they are kind of challenging, and, and a lot uh, quicker paced. So there you go. And before we go into the boat, we might as well get the ASMD and the ASMD core. That might come in handy. And we jump in the boat, and there's kind of a book there. There's no translator message there. And I apologize for the other translator message if it went by too quickly, but I was in a hurry to run. So pause it if you want, it basically just tells us again to run, which I think is the best um, strategy. Now we get another boat ride. Unreal has a lot of boat rides in it, doesn't it? I knew we were at Disneyland. I'm glad I figured out how to bring water back into the underground well system. The Nolly won't die of thirst, and it's a good thing the scuba gear worked so well. I wouldn't have made it without the new equipment. Much as I hate being back here, I have to say it was good to see the Nolly again. I believe I'm getting closer to the Prometheus. I can feel it. And that wraps up this episode of Return to Napoli. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.